coin collecting in Truckee Harbor. Let's not waste any time because the faster we begin, the faster we get this over with. So right down there, we have three coins to start us off with. A red coin. Um, even though it's uh, an underwater level, uh, the, the red coins are really, uh, and the 100 coins as well, are really not all that difficult. Uh, in Vanilla Mario 64, the two aquatic levels were the one with the least coins, but here it's really, really not a problem at all. What's up there, though? I see a shadow. Oh, it's a one-up. I'm not going to try and figure out how to collect it if I, if I want one-ups. Well, they're not really all that essential, considering that, well, this is, this is uh, basically Mario 64, where extra lives did absolutely nothing, since there are no checkpoints other than in the Bowser levels. And is there anything up there? Oh, right, a red coin! Good thing I looked, because otherwise I may have missed it completely and looked around for half an hour trying to find that last red coin. But, yeah, really not challenging at all, much like the rest of this world. The next one, however, oh boy, this is going to be so much fun. So, over there, we have a blue coin switch. You want to hurry up and uh, pound it, and you want to get near the top of this pole. Don't, don't get them by jumping from one pole to the next. Just do this instead. That's the only way I've found to get them all, and it's really, really nothing at all. So, wow, we're almost at 50 coins, and we've only explored this one area of the level. Told you it was going to be easy. So up there, if I remember, there are a few enemies, including a Chukya. Chukyas are pretty good sources of coins. Oh, red coin over there. This is another one that... Uh, I may have missed completely had I not uh, seen it by complete accident, but yeah, Chukya's very good source of coins. Uh, w one thing that I sort of don't like about the about this level is that you know it's Chukya Harbor. It's not like Chukya Cliffs or something because the the thing that makes Chukya's so dangerous is the prospect of being tossed. Um, down an infinite pit, though, there were also a few situations that were annoying in Mario 64, such as uh, being sent back near the beginning of the level and having to climb all the way uh, all the way back up. But this isn't one such level as you can see. This is just a, re a flat level with a few buildings, nothing spectacular. So, pretty good waste of, uh, of a Chukya base level. Though, there are going to be some dickish Chukya placements later on in the game, so don't worry about that. And now, while I'm doing this, sometimes something that I would like to plug is that uh, Skellux, the maker of this hat, has made a few videos in the last few months uh, showcasing uh, his latest projects he's been working on. One of them, Super Mario Starro DS. That is right. ROM hacks of Super Mario 64 DS are now a thing. And let's see what this sign says real quick. So yeah, stand on all four pillars and you'll get and you'll win a prize if you can catch it. Of course, since since this is a one-up, uh, these are one-up pillars, of course this means that the prize is gonna be a coin, right? Right? No, of course not. It's a one-up. And what was the what was it that um, if you can catch it deal? It appeared right on top of me. Well whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, there are a few coins up there, and in there you can see the last star uh, in that cage. Um, you're going to see, uh, when I'm done with this, just how to get that star. And believe me, this is a huge guy dang it. Good luck figuring that shit out on your own. But yeah, he made a preview of a DS version of Super Mario Star Road. Something else, he's made a preview for Super Mario Star Road 2. What the fuck?! How did that happen? I should have killed that thing, not... had the shell vanish. Whatever. He, uh, Skellux is, wor is working on a sequel to this hack. And if you think this hack is well made, well, you ain't seen nothing yet, because Star Road 2, well, we've only seen one level thus far, but it looks absolutely amazing. Once again, really looks like a game that 
Nintendo could have sold you for 50, 60 bucks back in the day. Really impressive. So I'm going to put video uh, links to both of these videos in the movie dis in the movie description if you're interested in seeing what these look like. And while I was saying that, we're almost at 100 coins. As I said before, very, very easy. Now you may be wondering, when's the difficulty going to come in? Because I advertise this hack as being really hard. Fair, but hard. And so far, we haven't seen much in the way of difficulty, aside from a few things in Skyland Resort. Well, trust me, this is only World 4 of 15. It gets far worse. And uh, this guy here, well, uh, I decided to talk to him just because, you know, to show you that uh, uh, they, there can be black bombs as NPCs as well. So he's hinting at the presence of um, the metal cap level somewhere around here, something that I already showed you. But if you have no idea, you've never played this game before, this guy is the one that you want to talk to. You're going to get a hint as to where it is. So, 100 star complete. We have only three red coins left to go. Whoa! Don't pick me up, bro! And we have one of these remaining red coins right here. And I think I remember where the other two are. In fact, here's one of them way in the distance right in uh, that anchor. And the last one, it's in one of those clams at the bottom of the water. There's something that makes this hack a little bit less challenging than it, than it honestly should be is that uh, it retains uh, Mario 64's health system where health and... Uh... Oh, come on! It looked like I went straight through it! But yeah, health and air run off the same counter, meaning that whenever there's water, you can easily heal off any damage that's done to you. Uh, and don't ask why I picked up that, uh, that one-up. I... I know where I'm going to be losing all of these lives, though, and it's coming up way earlier than I would like to. So here's the last red coin, so we can head back to, well, near the starting point, and get our star. So we're only going to have uh, one star left to do in this world, and it's the one that uh, I hyped up as a pretty big, as a pretty big guy, dang it. I, I swear, if, if it weren't for me showing it to you or anyone else on YouTube that's actually done this before, well, let's just say you're not going to believe it. So, let's just save really quick. And now, what you want to do, you want to head up there, and there's a hole all the way up there. You want to... No! I want to make it... I want to do a somersault, get up there, thank you. No, 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 no! Don't go back down. So... The other entrance. If you go through the regular entrance, there's no way for you to get this star. You have to go through there, and it was just that simple. I'm going to take a guess and assume that this was actually done through the same programming shenanigans that allow you to get to start on one side or the other of Tiny Huge Island. You know, how both paintings drop you off in different locations. Well, on the same location on either island, but whatever. World 5, Gloomy Garden. This one is tough. I'm probably going to die here a bunch of times, which is going to be a, somewhat of a change since I haven't died so far yet. Now, right here, there is a series of really dickish jumps, and right here, I, do, I, don't, I don't like these rotating platforms all that much. Never been good with them. So, jump up there. Now, don't try anything but a backflip. And here, this one. This jump. This fucking jump. Get off the wall, Mario. You want to do a jump kick and nothing else. Double double jump probably won't work. A, a jump kick is the most reliable way of doing this. Uh, what I'm doing right now is the 100 coin star. Not the star that I'm supposed to get right now. And the reason is very simple, as I'm going to uh, head back to press uh, the, the blue coin switch. I beg you, do not, I repeat, do not stack the 100 coins with the 8 red coins. The reason, I'll get into the reason in a bit, I'm just going to 
collect this real quick. Ah, so close! Now, I want to head back down to uh, n uh, near the beginning. Okay, what's down there? Oh, the platform is all the way over there. It wasn't even close! So, I want to fall back on this platform. And, uh... Okay, so if I drop down from uh, this thing over here... Uh, can I get up there without overshooting and risking death? Nope, doesn't look like it. So, I'm just going to uh, do it from here. I think it's pretty safe for me to do so. So, here we go. So, I'm going to start collecting coins right now. And now, I guess I should mention that the hard part is behind us. And I'll be honest, I'm pretty stressed right now because I don't want to have to do this again and risk dying over and over. I mean, look at that. There's walkways. They aren't that narrow, but still pretty narrow. And one mistake will end up with you dying a horrible, horrible death. So, as I was saying, you don't want to stack uh, the 100 coins with the red coins. And the reason for that is because the red coins only appear in uh, the red coin star. And when you choose that star, uh, there are some platforms, like the one that boobs on, that completely disappear, making this level absolute freaking hell to navigate. You don't need the red coins to get the 100 coins. Usually it's recommended, but here I would say it's not worth losing the access to platforms like this. So, this is what I strongly recommend. Do not stack both uh, together. And even if you even if you don't intend to, you know, uh, you're just going to pick a star at random to uh, get the 100 the 100 coins. Don't pick the red coin star or the one afterwards. They are stars 5 and 6 by the way. Pick pick one of the other four and you should be fine. Now, over there, let me guess, there's gonna be, like, one coin. No, actually, a whole bunch of them. There was a, that one coin in the box I opened earlier. So, let's go over to that boo. Sorry if I'm going really slowly, but uh, I, I just really want to avoid dying as much as possible. Now, um... I am going to make a U-turn. You saw a bunch of coins on platforms. But I'm not going to risk it and go after these coins because there's a pretty funny story about those platforms that uh, I'm going to tell to you when we get to uh, the appropriate star. But right now I don't feel like I'm in a storytelling mood because uh, my hands are getting all sweaty! I know this is pathetic, this doesn't look all that difficult. To be fair, the difficult, the, the, the difficult part has been done a while ago, but uh, this level doesn't really forgive if you fuck up. So, three boos, that means 15 coins right there. That's gonna put me at 70. Yay! I can count! Math is so easy! I think I can go up there, but I don't want to risk it because I don't 100% remember what's up there. Is it death or is it something you know, less uh, painful? So, um... Of course, let's grab all the coins we can. I think if I can get to 89 before having to uh, make a jump to what's essentially a point of no return, uh, I'll be good. Now, now I have 83, so I have to find... Okay, that's uh, the big boo shadow up here. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to be fighting him just yet. I'm just going to head over there and... Okay, okay, okay. We're pretty good, I... There's no real death up there unless you get really unlucky while uh, uh, slipping all the way down. Oh god. Don't tell me I'm gonna be a few coins short. I need three more coins to reach 89, please! And I see the, those platforms over there trolling me with, with their coins on them. No, I'm not going back for these. Oh! Well, that's a lot better. I was really worried for a second there, but uh, thank God those five coins were down there. So now I can head to the so-called point of no return, which is right over there. 